seeing is believing. Khartoum is one of the most, if not the most, peaceful, secure capital in the African continent and in the region. It is the only capital where a white man can jog in the streets of Khartoum early morning or late at night. So I'd like to welcome you to visit Khartoum. And I can assure you that whatever investment UK investors will engage in, it will be under the protection and the support of our government at all, stru at all structures, particularly the Ministry of Investment. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I'm grateful for this opportunity, and I would like to thank you all and thank all those who participated in making this important August gathering possible. Shukran. Thank you. The Minister's got five minutes to take uh, one or two points from the floor if um, anybody would like to raise something in light of what he said. If not, we will proceed to the um, next event. Khalid Nadim, South Asian Middle East Forum. Minister, um, I mean, we know about sanctions being... Iran's had a lot of problems with um, the banking sanctions with the US and how long it's been taking to be released and for businesses to do business with Iran. Are you hoping that this is going to be a very fast procedure that you can, that the banks can actually participate in supporting Sudan and that, in, that you won't have the same problems that Iran has faced and are you getting the full cooperation from the State Department? Because in the past I've heard the State Department has said yes we're doing it but um, they haven't been able to facilitate it. I don't want to refer it fully to Tariq, but I will <laughs> refer it partially to Tariq. But I can assure you that even before lifting of the sanctions, we started direct engagement with some American banks. And right now, we are actually uh, transferring money to our embassies uh, throughout the world, particularly in Europe and in the US, through some banks. And I'm glad that uh, the director of one of our largest banks uh, Bank of Khartoum is here, and the, the, the chairman. Yes, he is here, and uh, the chairman of the board of directors is also here. And these are the banks that started to engage with us early on. So right now there is no problem. One of the problems we are having is one is with some of the, uh, in some countries which are still hesitant. But before uh, lifting of the sanctions, we started engagement with uh, OFAC as well as. Uh, uh, the State Department in the, U in the U.S. and two uh, fora were held. One was in New York before lifting of the sanctions and the other was in London with some bank directors in order to address the issue of engagement with the government of Sudan and with Sudanese citizens. And this is why it was much easier than in the case of Iran. But it's still, I can't say that everything is fine, everything is perfect. It's still, we have got a mile to run but we are working on that, and our colleagues and friends in the U.S. are supporting that. Thank you. Yes, young lady? Uh, Laura Hyde. If you could stand, it would help. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Laura Hyde from BMI Research. As oil and gold uh, revenues increase, um, obviously um, foreign currency in inflows into the country will improve. But um, in the meantime, are there any uh, plans to make access to co foreign currency for businesses easier? Today's newspapers from Khartoum are carrying that now each Sudanese, Sudanese, each Sudanese can open an account in hard currency. This is happening for the first time in many years, to, many years back. And investors, of course, have got super rights compared to Sudanese sometimes, particularly their uh, investments need movement of money, revenue, as well as capital. So it is possible and easy, and I'm sure that more policies are now, right now coming to improve that. Thank you. Good. Any more points? Otherwise, yeah, final one, and then we will call it a day. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, James Turnbull, Denmead. Um, I just um, had a quick question um, um, for the panel in general, and, and perhaps um, one that could be shared by the 
um, uh, ambassador from the UK, um, which n now that um, Sudan is uh, has the opportunity to face um, the outside world um, and um, and almost a advertise what's happening in the country, that there are um, initiatives, some of which were just released um, by the IMF yesterday, um, discussing um, uh, the the need to um, simplify the um, the currency conversion. Um, and also um, promote internal economic policy, use this uh, opportunity for change in the right way. Um, m my question is, um, from the outside looking in, it's, it's difficult to understand um, uh, how, how, things, how those challenges are being met. And it would seem sensible um, if, as, as part of the, um, uh, the joint initiative between the UK and Sudan and perhaps other countries, uh, we could um, have a, um, an information gathering exercise um, where, where it would be simple for B um, British businesses looking to invest in the country to understand what the um, attitudes were to, for example, the ease of doing business, um, the corruption per per perception, perception indices, etc., um, and just generally uh, informing investment decision. Thank you. Thank you. You did start off by saying, just a quick point, but <laughs> never mind, that's fine. We'll allow the uh, panel... Tim, Since it is to, to the whole panel, I will leave it to my colleagues. <laughs> yeah, and then the final word can go to you, Minister. Yeah, Michael. Th uh, thank you very much. Yes, well, uh, actually, this has been a very major focus of the discussions which we've been having in Khartoum this week with the chief economist of DFID, uh, Stefan Dirkon. Uh, and uh, I was present yesterday morning at um, meetings with the cabinet secretary, with um, uh, the deputy uh, prime minister and the minister for, for, for investment, uh, which touched very much on the question of both uh, the foreign exchange rates and the ease of doing business issues. Uh, and DFID are... Uh, very, they, they asked both both uh, both um, ministers asked for uh, technical assistance in this area and help in uh, both getting through this issue and uh, explaining the issue. So I think um, we will be working with the government of Sudan to help them through this. As you say, the the the, the most fundamental thing is the exchange rate issue. Uh, the, the the IMF recommendation is clear that they should move to to a single clear exchange rate. Uh, uh, which would effectively float the currency. Um, there are issues with that, but I was very impressed by some of the discussions that we had with Stefan Dirkon, where he made clear that the current situation uh, perversely uh, encourages imports and discourages exports, which is exactly what the Sudanese government don't want to do. So uh, the best way forward in Stefan Dirkon's view is for full liberalization of the exchange rate, which he says has been able to work in other countries, even though in Sudan, with the limited uh, cushion available, it is, it is a bit more difficult. He is confident that it could be successful. Thank you. Tim, have you got anything to add or? No, that's fine. Uh, Minister, final word to you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, in a country, a country which has been under success for 20, 20, 20 years, you cannot deal with international banks, you cannot deal with the international economy. And then I can't see all of a sudden then all of a sudden opportunities are available. Although even during the engagement with the US government, we started reforming and even training our people because even our young bank uh, uh, employees were dealing with an economy that deals either uh, inside the country or under the table with some of those who are ready to sacrifice. Now I can say it clearly, of course. And then, we are now even retraining our people to engage with the international economic community, and that will take some time. Although even when, uh, uh, let us say, the prima facie uh, uh, or the decision to uh, lift the sanctions during the Obama administration, uh, and then we were supposed to go for six months until the final decision of uh, the current administration uh, has been decided, we has got a document of 10 pages. It includes all reforms that you can think of. And now we are gradually working in order to work on that. Of course, uh, we need a fast track to do it, but sometimes it requires some patience. But we are on the right track on that issue in particular. Thank you very much indeed, Foreign Minister. And thank you, Ambassador Michael Aaron, and also Tim Morris. Thank you. So. Uh, Somebody wanted to, uh, out of time. Uh, oh, Minister, you wanted to say something. 
Oh, we'll just wait for the microphone, yes. This is the Minister of Petroleum and uh, Energy, is that right? Sorry? Gas, gas, yes, petroleum. Do you stand, Minister, it would just help well, people thank you. Thank you very much. I think I add something here. In the petroleum sector, uh, investors are allowed to open foreign accounts and uh, we call them special accounts. And also a similar uh, local currency account. Costs are always locked in foreign currency. They lock them, whether they are spent in any other foreign currency, you change them to a dollar or a euro. And the investor is allowed to repatriate profits or move funds from those special accounts in any manner they wish. That is uh, in the petroleum sector, and I think it can be implemented in any other sector, such as it's mining. Even in other investment. Okay. It's also, it's also the same for other okay. investments as well. Right. Thank you very much indeed for that clarification, right. Minister. Thank and you. thank you to our panel. And um, I'm going to hand over to Atom Sandhu. But just to say that I, I reiterate the call that the Minister made about visiting Sudan. And I add another reason why you should go. I'm a huge fan of culture and history. And Sudan has amazing history. A thousand pyramids in the country. Yeah, a thousand, 300 preserving their superstructure and various ancient temples and so much to see. Beautiful country. So do visit. Thank you very much. Thank you.